other numbers to check the attendance. So if your name is Paul, so just let me know. And first. Side on. It's supposed to be brighter, right? It's a brighter than this. I don't know. Side up, right here. The main side, main side, okay. Hinduza, Hinduza, and Michelle Joseph, Joseph, here. Okay. Right. Uh, Sawan, Parma. Manisha, Matthew? Yes. And Navina, Mecca? Yes. Okay. Uh, Divya? Divya? Shea? Uh, Satish, Mecca? Mecca? And Jagriti? Alachandra? Jagriti? Ash Kumar Patel, Nakata Vijay, Rai Yudu, and Siddharth Serva, Siddharth Serva, Dido, and Shiva Teha Sharmala, okay. Uh, Udaya, three ready. Trivala, Bajara, Palu, Belu, okay. And Bhavana, Bang, Edith, and anyone? Your name? First name? BJ. BJ. That one's down. No, uh, <coughs> two names next to that, yeah. Uh, very good job. DJ? Sairam. Sairam? Mm-hmm. In the top. In the top? Yeah, the first Sairam. Mm -hmm. uh, so, ordered by the last name. Uh, I see. Okay. Then, let's go back to the form. <coughs> so, if your request is uh, approved, I quickly update here. So, in case the complete the selection, like the, if somebody already select the uh, non SQL database, it will be uh, declined. Also, if that is too popular one, like the uh, HBase, MongoDB, and the Cassandra, and the uh, Code, uh, what is the DynamoDB, uh, such a popular DB, I usually decline as to, to select another one. Okay. So please, before you ask the uh, database, please check the, this one, the first page or home page of the Canvas. And also you can check the previous selected the DB from the, uh, I uploaded the document to the uh, Canvas file. So you can find the uh, separate things. So please uh, select the, um, the database. Then the once you add approval, the next step is, I'm trying to my best to get used to <coughs> Mac OS interfaces. My first would be use the Mac OS. So, then,
first task is to uh, research on the selected NoSQL database. So once you got approval from me, so you uh, don't have to wait uh, start your the research. So in your the uh, due date of the the first selection of NoSQL database by the end of the, this weekday, the Friday, so please, this week, oh yes, so this week, so please uh, inform me as soon as possible. Then the, in your second page, the output of the deliverable of the second page is the documentation and the presentation. Mm -hmm. So you have roughly the uh, two, three weeks three weeks uh, to do the research. In doing the uh, research, it's not just uh, the searching the Wikipedia, then copy and paste, you know. Uh, you need to be accepted. Eventually, you are going to implement the, such a NoSQL database. So please try to download and install the program and then uh, see what's going on. Then the, in the second, the test, you are going to install and uh, model the NoSQL <coughs> database. At the time, some of you guys need to create the uh, database data. And also, you can use the existing uh, uh, data uh, from the UCI data set or popular data set. Recently, uh, Google announced to, it's a beta service, but uh, you can search the database or data set. So I didn't try yet, but I just uh, got the news from the Facebook. So Google data set search. So data set search. So you can even uh, search the data set. Okay. So not only the, this the project, but if you are doing something data analytics project or the machine learning project. So I need a data set, so like the uh, phonetical <coughs> so health data set. So you can find some the healthcare survey from 2012 and some other the data set you can find that from the Google. This is a better, better service, but uh, maybe useful. I didn't use. So this is my first time to uh, type and search using the, this one. So you can use uh, such a uh, uh, source to find the data, data set, then model, then the insert, and uh, implement the programming using the provide the API. It's uh, commonly happen. So some of the NoSQL database is no longer available. You can download, but uh, during the installation, so you cannot do anything. At the time, if you go back to the selection of another data, NoSQL database, uh, it's a little bit hard at the end of the second half of the semester. So while you are researching, please download and uh, try to install and uh, check the functionality and uh, so on. Then the uh, second phase is will be due on the November, early November. Then the who will have the uh, kind of the mini workshop to present uh, your the research. Uh, so, including poster or the oral presentation. Last uh, year, I think the last year, last semester, last semester, it was not uh, this class, but another <coughs> data mining class. A couple of students already published a paper on the conference based on the uh, this kind of the research. So you are able to, uh, if your the project output is good enough, so you. I more than welcome uh, you to contribute on more even after the, this semester. Okay, I will give the more information. So first, uh, why don't you, if you already select the database, start uh, for the, your the research. This is uh, just uh, the love guideline, what you guys need to do, but uh, depending on the NoSQL database, uh, some of uh, the uh, students need to add a uh, more information to the data model, or the sometimes the manual and the so on. So please feel free to add more information to the uh, given the template, okay. which is due on the October 5th. Then I don't decide yet whether we are going to go for the group project by two after the second phase. So I will see whether the um, individual project or the group by two will be, which one will be better? Okay, right now I don't decide it. Think about the 
uh, the individual project for the second task, page three and four, but uh, if needed, so we can form a team. At that time, the 10, the best presentation or research from the page two will be selected, then the, it will be credited. Okay, those who uh, are selected for the second task will get the additional credit, then the, we can do the uh, third and first the, um, page. Any questions? Okay, then the, I think that this the website may be useful mm -hmm. for the research, so especially data analytics, the web data mining, machine learning. So why don't you try the Google data set search, the website. This is a better service, but uh, may be useful. We are going to talk about the so last class we spent the uh, last two weeks that we spent the little bit time to understand what is the big data and what is the current trend in the uh, in terms of the data for the such a data processing and data management. Then finally, we understand why we need the new SQL database, okay? So also, it is true. Why choose the this one? So automatically change. the slide is short, so it's so automatically changed. Then the, uh, this week and the next week, the, we are going to very briefly cover the solution of just to deal with the, such a big data, as well as the NoSQL database. So from the database point of view, we will see the, how we can handle, how we can the, manage and process the, such a big data. So specifically, we are going to talk about the header. The solution. Okay. So before that, uh, it was 1994 when I uh, used the internet first time. Anyone who ever used the internet before the 1994? <laughs> <laughs> Even you was not born. So 1994. So when I have a chance to visit my elder sister who still lives in Hawaii. So I'd like to enjoy the beautiful paradise, I expect. So it was the after I uh, complete my the military service. So in my hometown, the, uh, it was the mandatory, still compulsory to do the military service for government, so for country. So it was uh, 26 months for in my case. But right now it's uh, reduced, it's uh, around 20 months, something like that. But anyway, so it, but I, most of the um, student, in, it's only for men, okay? Not the woman, unlike the Israeli. So they require both the male and female to serve for the military. But it is uh, only for the men, then the problem is if I go to the military service after I get the degree, then it will be very hard to get a job, right? Because I finished the degree and uh, after finished the uh, uh, two years, two and a half years, but uh, <laughs> I don't think that it will be. So most of the students and uh, actually join the uh, military the after the freshman <coughs> or the sophomore year. But in my case, I joined the army uh, the, during the senior year, in the middle of the senior. So I left uh, one more semester for graduation. So I expect uh, during that time, I can uh, catch up after I finish the military service. But it was uh, only 26 months. So which means it's uh, longer than two years, but less than three years. So to, there was a little bit gap year. So during that time, I decided to enjoy my life in the Hawaii. So I went to Hawaii. So problem, there is nothing you can do. 
after two weeks, really nothing. So to drive around the, uh, my elder sister, she lives in Oahu, so Waikiki Beach and so on. So not big island. So Oahu is uh, it takes uh, just two hours to driving around the entire the island. So if you driving around the five or six times, then it's really boring. So nothing you can do. So I decided to learn something. So I registered the course in UH, University of Hawaii. So I took a couple of the math class. So it was really boring. So because it's uh, easy for me. Because I uh, did, uh, even though my, I didn't study a lot in my undergraduate, but curriculum is uh, really so. I the, actually took the graduate level class, the MI, the, home, the, the old university. So it's, I took the linear algebra, actually. It's like the middle school level, <laughs> the linear algebra. So I took the, I cannot remember the course name, but it's uh, very interesting. So they actually introduced the internet first time. So I opened my account. So it's a uh.uh.edu account, then the email. I never seen the such a thing, so I can send the email, but um, I do not know any recipient. So I usually every day send the email to the instructor. Then uh, he introduced the FTP. So using the FTP, upload, download, upload, download, always the same file. So put, get, put, get. Then the, he introduced the tablet. Now, right now you are using SSH, but the tablet. It's the same thing, but not encrypted. So I use the tablet, log in the UH server. Then the, I learned the very basic command like the ls, pwd, and the vi command. So I can the, actually, the reason I, I learned the vi is to send the email. I need to get familiar with the, such a command line interface. It was called the pico at the time, but pine. I think the pine. So, Believe it or not, the dean of Scrub Engineering, Tarek, a uh, couple of years, until a couple of years ago, the, he used the old the command line, the mail, the application is called the Pine, something like that. Anyway, I learned the first time. It was fun, so I enjoyed it. Another interesting is the HTML. So he introduced, you can create a web page using your account. So I didn't have any idea about the account I got HTML5, but uh, I just follow his instruction. It's a H1 is a header, it's a big font, and H2 and the paragraph. I can put uh, my the upload, my the, uh, the photo. So I create the first my the web page. I'm not sure whether still the UH keep the, such a web page or not. Then at that time, so uh, one of the student asked, so is there any other web page that I can the, access? Uh, instructor, yes. So there are the many of the university open the, their own the web page to advertise or to show. So we can the, visit uh, some the MIT the homepage and uh, some the it was not huge number, but the, some of the company they start at the time to make their homepage like that. Then he introduced the Yahoo.com. So Yahoo, I, I. Didn't understand why the name is Yahoo, but the Jerryang at the time it was 1994. I think the early 1994, Jerryang and his colleague start the business like the Yahoo. Then the using the Yahoo, you can search the website. So then, if you were the Jerryang in 1994, how you can build the Yahoo site? What? will be the idea of the, such a Yahoo website. How can you do that? Huh. So how can you make the, such a search engine? Write a code for a search algorithm. Write some code for a search algorithm. Yeah, so what kind of search algorithm? At the time, it was not popular, even nobody taught the search algorithm in computer science class in 1994. Any idea? So who knows, using the time machine, so you can go back to the 1992 or 93, so you have a chance to be <coughs> super rich. 
then how can you do that? Can you the DNS server actually? DNS? Wow, it's a very difficult concept. Well, <laughs> they all have to register to the DNS. Yeah, register DNS, so we can the list of the DNS. That may be possible. So it is a very simple idea what the JDM implement. First, starting from the my the personal web page. So my personal web page, what is the main difference between the normal text, the plain text file and HTML file? Different format. What is the different? Uh, Actually, it's different. nothing different. Oh. They are the same plain the text file. You can open the HTML file using Notepad. Right? It has metadata. That metadata? Is metadata is just a plain text. It has different semantics and syntax. Semantic. Who understands that semantic? Browser. Browser. Okay, that is a standard. It's the HTML standard. So if uh, browser see the H1 with the map tag, then is we can use the uh, three, thirty font size like that. Okay, so file itself is not much different. You say actually the, you can the, you don't have to use the editor. You can you can just use the VI or the Notepad or the anything. Just like you can code the Java with not bad, okay? I prefer that way still. So, but, so, however, main difference is it has the tag information, especially hypertext. HTML means hypertext markup language. So using the such a hi, the hypertext, hypertext tag, what you can do? You can, if you just click select, then the request that file to different server. Okay, then start from the my web page, the lead.html file. So I have the three hypertext tag link. One is for UH, another one is for the my friend, and the third one is for the, uh, the company, like the another university, like the U University of Bridgeport. I'm not sure whether at the time you be had the web page or not. Then just a visit. The first one is the uh, University of Hawaii, the website, and what is the HT the the HTTP protocol? It's a TCP/IP based application layer. The protocol that client browser request a file, any file. It doesn't have to be, to be the HTML file. It can be image. It can be script file. It can be whatever. Okay, any file. In case of the script file, like the Python file, and the server receive that request, then realize this is the Python file. Then behind the run, the Python code output will be written. Or if that is the I'm requesting a.txt file and server web server the understand the, this is the text file, so just uh, find the a.txt file and return back to the client. If that is an image, same thing. So that's what's going on the, in the uh, HTTP service. So if the link, the University of Hawaii request, then the return that file, then Yahoo store that file. Not only just uh, browse and but you can say, is it difficult? No. You already received that file, even though in your client, any web browser. Okay? Then save it. Then check <coughs> is there any the link inside the uh, document, HTML file, or whatever the file you request. If there is any tag, you can take out that link and send the request. Right now, it's very easy using less full API. You are using the RESTful API. Just uh, send that request and receive the file save. And keep going. This is called what? Crawler. So you can crawl it, the web page. Like the, when you crawl your the attic or the floor. So you can, the, it doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to have the, any destination. Just uh, going to follow the link, link, link. Whenever you visit the, any web page, just copy 
on your low carb storage. Okay? Then, that is the crawler. So, still, the crawler, the uh, popular, so for example, I'm doing the something research to analyze a web page. Then, you can use it. There are commercial crawler, or you can implement by yourself. It's not very difficult. Okay? So, then the download and copy. Download, copy. That is the crawling. So, that is the first step, main step. Once we have the bunch of web page, you can keep running such a crawler, okay? 24 hours a day and seven days a week, and uh, not only just one server, many, okay? Then you can have another server, okay? So while the first server is doing the crawling job, the second server can serve for the request. So there are user. There is a user. I wanna uh, access any HTML file that include the bridge board. How can you? How can you do that? Just read the document. Then if there is any word bridge board b r i d g p o i t, then return that the document. That's it. Even you can use some of the command line interface like the graph. Right is most pop, one of the popular the command line interface the command. So using grab you can actually check the whether document has the something work like the bridge code. If yes, return that document. Otherwise not. Very simple search engine. That's what the JDM did for the Yahoo search engine first time. It's a real. What about Google? Google did the same thing. Okay? But right now, I'm not sure whether still the people who are using the Yahoo, but the, this one. So the, this basic approach is uh, going on the uh, market, search engine market. Okay? Then, what will be the problem? When you search the document, <coughs> That include a certain keyword. It was okay the, in 1994. Probably how many web pages? Less than a million. I'm not sure, but a uh, couple of millions five. Couple of millions five. You can handle even the right now the one laptop has how many documents? How many five? And so less than the million, but it's a huge. So but it's a getting bigger and bigger and the bigger, okay? So, Google, first, where do they store the copy, the HTML file? Probably local storage or certain storage area, okay? So at the time, probably 1994 is uh, not the terabyte level. I didn't hear anything about the terabyte at the time. Only the several, even the several gigabyte, it was really huge, the storage. So Yahoo and uh, such a the Google search engine company, they stored the, such a file in the file system, like the gigabyte level, the file system. But in, you know, the around the 2000, year 2000, the dot com bubble, it was called the dot com bubble, everybody. The investor money and the technology, computer science, IT, they the, uh, <coughs> give into the such a internet service, internet application, and uh, build the dot com, dot com, dot com everywhere, which means more and more web pages, more and more the web server has been the running. Then they create a huge, really huge number of the files. So, such a traditional way to search the document using the keyword. Takes a long time. From the millions of the file and the graph, it will be some, I type the bridge word, but it will be forever. So how to address the such a problem? Then the, we need to think about the search engine, like the, probably they are using index. So it's an, Inverted index is one of the approach. 
So which means the popular keyword bridge code we is in the one dot HTML file, two dot HTML file. So you can search search uh, uh, the keyword first and then the return this one <coughs> like this. Okay. So this is the one of the problem. Second problem. File system, they keep the, all the millions of copies of the data. Next day, it's a, just a one time visit and the copy, and that's it. No, as you know, the Google copy the same file again and again and again. They show the different version. Sometimes you can see, even though the web server is not working, so you can access cache data because they copy the control data server. Okay, which means even for the one file, there are multiple versions. So it's a bigger and bigger. So conventional way, the legacy system for the file system, legacy file system cannot keep the, such a huge, really huge number of files. So Google, so not only the Google, but the, anyway, Google realized that. So they need a new approach to handle such a, we call it a, this kind of problem as a big data problem. So when we have a, such a big data, huge amount of data, so traditional file system doesn't work. So that is the idea, motivation of the Google file system. So around the year 2000, then finally they have the stable version of the Google file system. Then the surprisingly, in the year 2003 and the four, usually Google is not the non-government organization. It's a definitely pro private profit company. Okay, then they usually like the Apple. Apple still the, is called a closed application and the software, and the Mac OS is not open source, but. Google, surprisingly, at the time, they opened the source code and the idea to the public through the conference, the paper. So they actually the, published a very well-known paper regarding to the uh, Google file system. Then they donated this system to the Apache Foundation. <coughs> so Apache the Foundation is open source the, uh, the group. So if they, the project is selected, uh, anybody who wants to volunteer to improve the performance and uh, something development, uh, they can do that. Even though you guys can do that if you want. So in the uh, uh, Google also, ma most of the major company in IT are the sponsor of the Apache Foundation. So Google file system was selected. People was, most of the people in IT and computer science surprised first Google release the source code and the license of that the Google file system. Second, so that will be the solution. Most of the company at that time realized the had encountered the same problem. Yahoo, same problem at the time. And the other company had the same problem. So they the actually the really like the approach of the Google file system. So Apache, they, other company, Yahoo, and uh, later Facebook, and uh, other company will be sponsor of that. Then finally, they used uh, such a, it's called the Hadoop. The Apache Hadoop project <coughs> is selected the major the, uh, project of the uh, Apache Foundation project that many of the company, the sports. So that project. Then, so Hadoop is the main solution of the such a big data. So that is the history, the very short history of the Hadoop and the big, the big data solution and Hadoop. So today we are going to see the in one day. So usually it will take the, at least uh, several weeks to learn about the Hadoop, but so very briefly about the, what is the Hadoop and the, what is the main component of that. Basically Hadoop the, consists of the three main parts. One is from the GFS, it's a Hadoop distributed 
buy system. It's a buy system to handle the big data. Idea? Why not distribute? Because one server is not big enough and uh, not good enough to process uh, such a the big file, the big data. Why not just get uh, scale? The file system, distributed file system. That's the idea of the Hadoop distributed file system. Second thing is, it's worse, the, I think the 2003 or 2004, at the same, almost the same time, 2004, Google also released the, another well-known paper, map reduced paper. This is a file system. So I want to process the big data, in other words, programming. I want to do the programming, okay? I have an idea I need to implement. So big data is on the head of, so how can I do that? So they have the map reduced the framework the, in the Google. Then also they Google release in the public, like the Google file system, map reduce. Who is the, but this is a little bit controversial, but the uh, uh, true story is Google is not the first company who invent a map reduce, but it is true, Google is the first company who officially released to the public through the conference paper, the idea of the map reduce, but who is the first one who used the map reduce. Have you ever heard about divide and conquer? If your enemy is too strong to beat, what is the solution? Separate the problem, okay? And attack one by one. Julius Caesar. Long time ago, he did such a way, okay? Or, I do not know the name of that in English. In China, there is a uh, very well-known scholar <coughs> who edited Art of War. Anyone who heard about the, the author of the Art, Art of War? Sun Tzu? Yeah, right. Is it in English? Is he some Japanese? Japanese. Yeah, ja I know. It's the, the Chinese. Oh, so, China? oh, yeah, Chinese. Yeah, Chinese. Chinese. Trump likes him. <laughs> but anyway, it's just, you can find the same approach. Divide and conquer. Same idea. So, to, instead of handling entire big data, why not? The one by one. One idea is uh, data is distributed using the HDFS. So we can get the benefit of the, such a distributed data using map reduce. However, map reduce idea was used before. Then the, I think the Google used that approach and name it, then publish. But the, inside the algorithm or the approach is the worst the proposed to many other people. So Google was not first, but the, it is true. Google is the first one who combined and uh, open to the public. So in around 2004, I believe, either of them at the time. The idea of this one is to divide and conquer. Data is, uh, we will see the more details uh, today, but so in case data is uh, distributed, we run the job separately. Then combine the together to get the final output. This is the idea of the map reduce. However, uh, yes? There is a certain algorithm. Called the merge sort, that works exactly the same. The merge sort is when we sort the data, we can divide, okay, then sort, and then from the top, we can merge. Yes, this is divide and conquer approach. There are a lot of such a divide and conquer, okay? So, but this one is uh, more programming level, the approach. We will see a little bit more details. Interestingly, so several years ago, the Google announced that they will, they do not, the Google is to no longer use the map reduce as a, they, their the programming, the framework for the big data. Instead, they have the, their own. But it is true in the market, the currently <coughs> and the in near future, the map reduce approach will be used. Um, I think the this is not the solution, this is the kind of approach framework. So 
map into C cells in under the head, it is the solution, but it's a kind of a divide and conquer approach. This approach will be used a lot. We will see a little bit more. So that is the map you just see. The header file system and the map you use is the programming framework. There is a one more that is the, the yarn. So Apache yarn is the once we distribute the data along the distributed system. The problem is Sometimes a server is a fast. He's working very well, so it's a fast. But uh, another server, he is uh, very lazy. It doesn't work. So because of him, the overall performance will be. We need to wait until he, the finish the job. Okay. Even though the other server are done. Also, one of the server, he she is uh, sleeping. So nothing. So because of the one partial failure or something problem, all the other job cannot be completed. So there should be something monitoring and uh, coordinating such a research along the if that is in the one server, operating system is just in charge of that. Do you remember the operating system? It's a resource allocation and monitoring and coordinating. That's the main job of the uh, operating system. However, if we are using the multiple server, different node, a number of nodes, there is no entire master the operating system. We have used such an operating system. For example, in the Linux Fedora, the Linux is along the server, but it's really overhead. You cannot get the full benefit of a distributed system due to the complexity. So that is a reason Apache had to focus on the file system, not operating system level. If you focus on the operating system level, it will be really complicated. The overall performance will be downgrade. So instead, each computer is running their own operating system. Then we are going to focus on file system level. Okay? Because the main part of the big data, main problem of the big data is the I.O. Okay? Input and output, the I.O. Data I.O. So that is the reason. So, there is no such a resource monitoring and uh, managing. So, first uh, version of the uh, header didn't have the, such a resource uh, monitoring and coordinator. So, this one is the uh, yarn, is uh, the another the resource and uh, managing and the monitoring tool. So, that by combining these three, so we can say this is the head of big data solution. So then, the, there are more things like the, if we are using the just the file system, I have something like the NoSQL database, the database concept. So I try to manage the insert, update, delete, and search the data from the HDFS, the Hydro Distributed File System. But file system itself, we will see, it's not very flexible. Actually, it's a read-only, for example. You cannot the update. You cannot delete the data. It's a read-only. To focus on the processing big data. So what if I have the requirement to modify the data? So what the indexing? So we need something database. That is called the HBase. They are very close. We will see why. For example, key the value. Map reduce consider data as always a key value. So key value is so pretty much similar as the database concept. So using the key, we can access the value. So HBase is one of the application, one of the application used in the header. There are many other. Pig, Scoop, Uzi, Ozon, and what else? Hive. So, depending on the requirement, I need to, to I need to access the SQL data. Then at the time you can use the uh, the scope. I need to do something. Then there's another application. So you can add based on this core the component of a header. You can add 
more the specialized the application <coughs> program. So by combining all of this, this is called the Hadoop ecosystem. Sometimes we can use the animal name, like the pig and the high. Well, the reason is that uh, I guess the name of the head of head of is the name of uh, the toy who invented the head of itself is the, whose name is the dog cutting. So dog cutting is a very well known uh, scholar and actually developer, very popular, famous developer in open source community. Then uh, he was uh, the chip reader, he was the chip reader of the Apache Foundation and also he worked for the Yahoo to replace the entire Yahoo system by the Hadoop. So Hadoop actually used a lot the such a the system. Then he contributed the, a lot for the such a Hadoop ecosystem, some of the very the popular Apache Foundation project. Then the, he authored the, our textbook uh, textbook is not required for you, but uh, if you want to know more about the Hadoop, the big data solution, Hadoop def definitive guide, so actually the author by the dog cutting, his son had a toy named Hadoop. It's an elephant toy. So he named the, this system as a Hadoop by borrowing uh, his son's toy, so elephant. After that, the people like to use the something animal name, then the, by, for the, such a software package, the, we, instead of the Hadoop software package, we call Hadoop ecosystem. So today, we, I'm going to introduce the, uh, this the core component of the Hadoop, also some of the very popular the ecosystem application, and then the second part, I'd like to a little bit focus on the map reduce the frame one. Then the next week, we will do the exercise lab. Uh, first part is to get familiar with the HDFS. The, it's called the HF share. So using the head of share, the, you are able to upload or download or manipulate the such a data. <coughs> and the, using the map in this framework, we are not going to use the YAN because the, our virtual machine is the single. It's not multiple nodes. Singular, we are pretending the cluster system, but it's still one the node, the Hadoop system. So we don't have to use the YAN. Instead, of just the, the, without YAN, the, we can practice the map reduce program. <coughs> then, oh, one more thing. So, this, the material, is based on the cloud era <coughs> distribution. I forgot the CDH stands for, oh yes, Cloudera Distribution, the Apache Hadoop. So, means, so Apache Hadoop, the project are entirely open source. So, which means so you can the, use them the, without pay. Okay? However, sometimes it is difficult. And also, sometimes I'm using the Hadoop, but in case something problem. There should be someone who is responsible to many, many, or the main for the maintenance. So, cloud era, on top of the Apache Foundation, the project product, they have the kind of distribution, the software. So I do not know how to exactly use this one, this one, this one. Instead, you can the download and install CDH. 
the, then the, this program check the, uh, what kind of server you have. Then recommend you can use the, this one for the master node, this, this, this is the data node, and you can use the Apache, uh, the Hadoop, the distributed file system, also you can select the, this, this, this option, automatically install. Okay? Then also they provide the maintenance, so in case something problem, so they can handle such an issue with payment, so you need to pay. So that is the Cloudera. So Cloudera is, was the first company who had a business very successfully. So uh, using the header. And the Hotworks and the many other company are doing the similar thing. So we are going to use the CDH uh, for our practice. They provide the uh, Cloudera, the educational system, so we can freely use the virtual machine as well as the, the uh, material. So using that, the material, so we are going to see what is the Hadoop and how we can use. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. It looks like the art. Better out. Okay. So I already explained about the, what is a Hadoop. So Hadoop is the first uh, distributed. We are going to use the um, there are two types of scalability. One is a horizontal, one other one is a vertical. The vertical means we can increase number of CPU in one server or the increased amount of memory. And uh, at the um, uh, bandwidth, we can increase that is the vertical scale up. It's a limit. Okay? Also, we cannot get the full benefit of it. Instead, the horizontal scale up is we can add another node. Okay? So this is the distributed system. We will get the benefit of the distributed system. Another benefit of such a distributed system is we can scale up, scale up without downtime. So it's a scalable. Also, most of the distributed system we expect, even though one of them is a fail, they still should be aware of it. If you remember the uh, the cap theorem that I very briefly introduced. So one of the important things is availability cap among the cap. So if one is down, the entire system is out, it's not available. So such a the distributed system should be available even though partial failure. That is the um, fault tolerance. And also open source is another one. And Hadoop is the solution for such a big data. These are the ecosystem that I'm mentioning. So today I'd like to introduce the Hadoop main core component, including HDFS and uh, Baptist and not, and there are many other. We will mainly talk about the HBase from the NoSQL database, the point of view later. Many companies, so much more than that. So CDH is uh, the cloud era software on top of Apache, the product. So you, without using the CDH, it's OK. So you can uh, download the uh, uh, separately <coughs> HDFS, the values, and HDFS is a core part. You can download together. And it's the, but uh, if you want to other the package, like, the, for example, the high or the hue, you need to install separately. So I already introduced the main problem of the big data, so we don't have to do it again. So this is a vertical solution. We can have the big computer, but it's not really the possible. Have you ever heard about the name of the Grace Hopper? You should do. <coughs> From where? Debugging. So what is the debugging? Right. You fix the problem on your code. Then why is called the debugging? Mm -hmm. 
No. She found one time the her system stuck. Then the, she realized that there was a bug inside the computer system. So she debugged, then it worked. So from that time, it's called the debugging. I believe, I'm not sure about it. So that's the debugging. And the Grace Harper is one of the most famous female computer scientist. And she was pioneer in the distributed system also. Then the chief proposed, uh, why not? If one is not working, the main. So that is the idea of the uh, distributed system. Then, what is the new in Hadoop? Because uh, it was, there were the several distributed systems before. Even when I was a student, we have used, uh, you can see the MPI. So message passing interface, open MPI. So we can use the uh, it is true, the government and the mostly government invest a lot of money such a high performance computing paper. Then the, we can do the parallel programming. So from time to time, the, our department also the, offer the parallel programming class. So without using the Hadoop and the map videos, we have used such a divide and conquer approach. Main problem? Very, very complicated very difficult. So you need to dis divide the job for each node and uh, you need to take care of the uh, resource monitoring, resource management and everything through people. Sometimes it's not possible. We expect uh, like the linear the increase the performance along the number of nodes but sometimes it's like the daham because of the complexity. So we have uh, the, such a the distributed approach to handle the big data or the, but also at the time main problem is not was not the the IO is that is computation. So we focus on such a distributed system like the to for the higher computational power, like the finding prime number. It's a fully computation. You don't read a lot of data. But it's a lot of com computing, CPU bounded job. But our big data system read huge amount of data. And mostly input and output. We have the computation, but considering the uh, amount of uh, IO job, it's less. So this the legacy system does not uh, address the problem. such a problem it's a new approach first uh, we they thought about the, what is a requirement to build uh, such a new approach on the big data the first one is the support of partial failure in other words in case one of them is a fail or the other should work without <coughs> any downtime so that is the idea how can we support such a partial failure? So basically, Hadoop file system has a multiple copy of the data in the different mode. When you upload, when you write the file to the Hadoop file system, if one of them is a fail, okay, still the other two is the available. So that means there might be another node that monitors that this one. This is called uh, usually master node, and this is a slave node. So head of system basically based on the, the master and the slave approach. So it has one master node and the slave node, and along the slave node, we have the multiple copy of the data to support the partial failure. And also, 
in any level of the failure, sometimes transaction failure, sometimes the server level, the node level failure, and uh, sometimes the data center level failure, any level of failure, so we should have the uh, data, okay? It's uh, not damaging. So that is another requirement. So that should be recoverable. So that is the, and also consistency. So we should support the consistency, even though there are failures, and also the scalable. In case we need the more power, we can add another node, another node. <coughs> then we can have the uh, scalable power. So that Hadoop is the solution. So let me briefly explain about the Hadoop file system first. What is a file system? Data Any structure. Data structure for what? Managing files. To manage number of files, right? So basically it has directory and file data structure. So directory manage number of the files. Then at that time we can use file control block, header information, metadata of the file. Then the directory has the, the header information. Then what if we have really huge number of files? So one directory has millions of them, it's too many. So we can separate number of a directory. But sometimes we want organized, so it can be hierarchical. Directory of directory and server directory. It's a hierarchical structure. And also we can link to the other jump. So it's a graph. It's a, a cyclic graph. The structure is our mostly commonly used file system. Like the, what kind of general purpose file system you use? NTFS, FAT1632, EXT0, 2, 3, 5, 8, and uh, Recently, we have the new file system. So that is the general purpose file system. Okay. Then, anyone who took the operating system class last semester, what was the second project? Rollover file system. Probably you may not realize what is a really portable file system. I just follow the project description to implement something. But what we did in the portable file system, even though you didn't take the course, so I assigned the project to implement the portable file system, which means, so we have, for example, NTFS. So it's uh, our post file system, primary file system. Using this uh, primary file system, we are going to create uh, another small file system, like the, this one. From the NTFS point of view, this is nothing but file. So for example, a.tfs, extension tfs, for example. Just a file, okay? Then divide by number of a block. Each block size is 512 bytes. Let's say this is 10K, okay? In one K, in 10K, how many? 512. 20. Okay? We can have the 20 blocks here. This is called a blocking. What is a block in operating system? It's a IO unit. It's a data structure for IO unit, which means whenever we read the data, entire block will be Return. Okay? So this is IO unit. Why we are why are we using the such a blocking for IO? Efficiency. Efficiency faster. The reason is that I need only one byte of data. But operating system will return entire block that include one byte. Is it efficient? Why not? 
I need one byte, but the entire 512 bytes will be written always. Even though I don't need the 511 bytes. Yeah. We are not going to read the directory 512 bytes. Instead, this will be loaded into the memory first. Then, CPU read, actually read the data, then return to the CPU, then the CPU will read the data using the address. Okay? Then, there might be chance the other data in the same block. Read by the CPU. That makes sense. Even though you need a one byte of data, mostly you open the file and read next byte, next byte, next byte. Because of that, we call the file stream. File is a stream of byte. It's an array of byte. Depending on the file type, it can be different file structure. JPEG file is different from the <coughs> notepad. Notepad is different from the, your, the uh, PowerPoint file. But in terms of the definition of file, it's nothing but stream of byte. So, higher chance, very, very high chance to read the next byte, next byte inside. At that time, we don't have to read it again from the file system. Only from the memory. This is a cache. So, we can get the benefit of cache. So, that is the reason block by block, input and output. So, our portable file system divided by number of block. Then we can copy the, we have a.txt file. This is a 10 byte. So this 10 byte use a free block here. This is the upload or sometimes put into the, this file system. If I want to read the data from this file system, get this file to the another file system. Or your application can directly read the data from here. Okay? So this is the file system, very small file system. You can make your own operation. The read and write is a general purpose operation, but I have something new operation you can implement for your file system. Then if you have the program language that would like to access your the file system, you can provide API. That's it, file system. So it can be the general it can be general purpose. So this is a portable file system that you implement. The reason I actually the assigned such a project is it can be the exactly same concept in the distributed system especially header file system. Header file system is the running on general purpose file system. So if we are using NTFS, yes, okay. On top of NTFS, so you can create the <coughs> distributed file system. Just like the portable file system. From the general purpose primary file system, HDFS is nothing but file. Just a file. Yes. Missing one thing, you're missing the, the header information. Oh, yeah, I didn't explain, right. So, actually, when you build a portable file system, the more one, another important thing is you need to define the, this header information. Actually, I, it will be forever. I cannot explain the header. So, if you already took the operating system, you realize the question, final exam question was. Why don't you draw the data structure of this one? Okay, how you define it? The reason why I say that is because it's, it's relevant for Adobe or, or HDFS because HDFS saved the header information and the right. main node. Right. So not as a part of, that's good, the point, not as a part of the file system. Later, I will explain that will be metadata stored at the separate node. That will be the master node. I will explain later. But first, HDFS. So, when you install the HDFS, so this is the, let's say, ext, ext the, the two, the file system in the unit. On top of that, this 
This is the new file system. The new file system, which is called the HDNF, Hadoop Distrib Distributed File System. This will be stored at the number of nodes. Okay? They are called data node 0, data node 1, and data node 10, data node, for example, 11, like that. The data node, number of data node, this file system will be created. Okay? Then, another, the different thing of the, the, the distributed file, HDFS. Uh, from the general purpose file system, most of the file system use the 512 byte, the block size, or multiple of them. In case of a database mm. management system like the Oracle Informix DB2 MySQL, they are using much bigger than that, like the 2K and 4K, 8K, sometimes 1 megabyte. Okay? So they, these are the block size for the database. What? Database need a lot of input and output, so they do better use bigger size of a block. But they are usually multiplication of operating system block size. Operating system usually mostly use 512 byte. I want to use a 500 instead of 512 byte. What happens? You need to use another I/O, right? Because of 12 byte. Anyway, basically, even though you are using Hadoop, you, even though you are using the, what is, the Oracle, whatever, the, eventually you need to use the operating system I, okay? That is the 512 byte. So multiplication uh, of the 512 byte. What about this card? Which one will be better? Bigger than operating system block or the same as operating system block? Same? Any other? Bigger than or the same? Much, much bigger. So, mostly the title of this file system use 64 megabyte or 128 megabyte the block size, which means I want to read just an extreme case, one byte of data from the Hadoop. Entire six, 64 megabyte will be loaded into the memory. Okay? Why? Why do we use such a really big the block size? Maybe because of statistics. They think most of the time they, use, they need all of those. So it's a fully IO job. Big data, currently main problem of the big data is I.O. We read one terabyte, petabyte size of data, five. Go back to the, what is the motivation of Google file system? Google has really big size of the file, okay? So, if we are using 512 byte, I.O., I.O., what happened during the I.O.? Only the disk controller is busy, no, CPU is also busy because CPU is uh, involved every time for each I/O. Because of that, in operating system, we need bypass the CPU for the big file. DMA, we can directly the access to memory. We need a specific device. Then the bypass the CPU overhead. Same thing. If we if we read the one petabyte size of file. How many times of the IO? Divide by 512 by, it's a huge overhead. Instead, if we are using 128, 128 megabyte, so we can drastically reduce the overhead of the CPU because our main focus is not IO bound, either CPU bound, the computation bound job, is that IO bounded job. So we use such a big size of the file. That require one. This will be loaded into the memory. So memory is a very important critical in the Hadoop system. Even though so 
you don't have to purchase a high performance computing, like the multi billion dollar the high performance computing. Instead, you can use the PC, personal computer of this one. Then, most frequently asked the question my company would like to build a head based big data solution. Then, what is the best node computer to build that? First suggestion is bigger, as big as possible for memory. So memory size is uh, critical for the performance of this. Why? Because we are using the bigger size of the, uh, the block. This should be loaded into the memory. So how many? Only one block? No, definitely not. Many blocks will be loaded and uh, will be used. Also computation later during the math reduction. So bigger size of memory is uh, critical. So it is suggested uh, at least uh, four to five thousand level of the PC. It's not PC, it's uh, like the mid-range workstation. Okay, at least uh, thirty-two gig to the sixty-four gig the memory size of that. Okay, so this is a distribution. So this one is divided by the number of the block. So usually huge block like the this, like the this. Then we have, as we have seen here, it's a when you insert the HL, we have master node. So this is the master node, it's called the naming node. Actually, header version is starting from the one to recently the header three. Version three is no longer a beta service. Is uh, the stable version is uh, released. So in one version one, you can have the naming node, master node, only one master node. It looks like the master node will be important, right? They are data node, processing node. However, naming node is the master node who govern everything. As he suggests, each general purpose file system has metadata, header information in the file as a directory, okay? That manage the free block and the so on. In the head of this data file system, we take out the, all the metadata information into the naming node. This naming node has all metadata information, which means, what if this one is a fail? Later, the other node will take over the job. What if naming node is failed? It's a single point of failure. You lose everything. So, version one didn't consider such a thing. Actually, there was a secondary node before. Secondary node. Secondary naming node. It looks like the backup of the naming node. No. At the time, this one was in charge of the housekeeping job. Because uh, this one has all metadata information, so sometimes checking and uh, collecting and some garbage data and throughout and uh, the message, the data, then insert. So housekeeping time is just a helping of the naming node. So version two, they realize we need uh, something backup. Standby naming node. In case this one is failed, this one will take over. Okay? Like that. Then the new version of the head of three, they have, you can the set up number of naming node, three, like that. The reason is that it may not be happen, no, it happened in the real life system. So for example, the file system, it was it is suggested to have the mirror data, which means you have two copies of the data. In case one is fake, the other one can be available. It's a mirror. If you remember the operating system, like the rate, 1 plus 0, or 0 plus 1, stripe, and mirror. So mirroring is the subject. Nowadays, it's OK, because the disk drive and the SS getting cheaper and cheaper. We can add. In the one of the example of the mirroring in the Bank of America, I have a chance long time ago. So it was a long time before. But they said they have the seven copies of the same data, even different location. So there, one of my friends, 
His job is only in the morning checking the, whether there is a failed hard disk drive. Then, if yes, replace remotely. That's his job. Only check in the morning any failure. He said it's every day there is a failed disk drive, so he can just replace. <coughs> then the catch up for using the, the other. No downtime. Even though one of the data center is collapsed, then the, the other is still the available. So, they have the, even the five, the seven, eight different copy, different location, naming them is a single point of failure. So it will be a problem to use for the commercial industry. So they, the current version support the number of the naming node. What? The, we, I will simplify the naming node here. So, another important thing is uh, the, there are some requirements that we have seen. One of the requirements is, the, even though one of them is a fail, <coughs> so let's say the data one is here. This one is failed. This node, this block is not available. So instead of the one of the node, whenever we upload the data to the Hadoop distributed file system, we will have at least three copies of the data. So for example, in the client, who are the local of the name node, it is fine. So I have the a.txt file. It's a huge, let's say the, it's a, uh, one gigabyte. Let's say that we are using the 64 megabyte and this is 80 megabyte. The file. So if you will learn the using the handle, HF share. I do file system share. There is a share command to upload the file. Uploading means from the ext2 or the client, the file system to the distributed file system. You can move, you can insert, you can put the central data file. Okay. When you upload this one, then metadata, ARTXT. First, this naming node check availability of the data node. Every 30 seconds, I cannot remember the exact time, every certain amount of time, check the availability and check the response time, which is called the heartbeat check. We check the, this name node, check the heartbeat, this name node know which node are available. If this one is a network failure, then the, this curve exclude the, this one as a candidate of the location to put the, this data. So we naming node no data 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 11 are available. Then this one in the two blocks. So first, this one is available, so the data node is 0. Oh. Ada.txt need block 1 and the block 2. And the block 1 of the Ada.txt is the first data node 0. So first block, Ada.block1 is copied. At that time, not through this one communicating, then let the, this client know where then streaming copy. Then if this one is done <coughs> directly, the date naming node or uh, the let the, this client know. You can copy the block one to the zero one two. So which means directly communicate and A1, another copy. And we have A1 here, copy, three copies. Then return when this one is done, inform that this, this, this is done. Then the next block, block two, is the end, the 10, 9, 10, 11. Then this one contact the 9, 10, 11. Then done. So three copies. You can change the number of copies when you configure the, this one. 
the default is a three copy. So, which means one of them fail, still the other two are available. Okay. So this is a very quick overview of distributed file system. Then the naming node manages all the metadata. So when you read the data, first you need to request to the naming node. And a.txt has the two block, and the b1 and b2 are available. First, let the disk client to access the, the data node 0, data node the 9, and access the this one. So you can get the data like that. Okay? Then, what is a different, different thing from the other the distributed system? First, this is a file system level not operating system level, which means they have the shared nothing architecture. Many of the distributed systems share the storage or even share the memory. It will be really complicated and slow because of the cache. But this is a shared nothing. Shared nothing. Okay. So which means the job should be distributed. Okay. Another important thing of the this the this with the file system is only support read only. You can append the data, but you cannot modify. Why? It's more time consuming. Yes. It's so waste of time, waste of resource. Because our main problem is the big data. What is the so one of the first applications of the head of distributed file system was network log analysis. Okay? Each server generates a lot of log data. Okay? Which one the what, any the network the request through the specific port and the huge amount of log data will be stored. Then the our goal of to analyze such a network log data is is there any attack? Attack means, uh, for example, DDoS. DDoS? Is it correct? DDoS attack. Which means, keep requesting the same port. What happened? What happened when you receive the request through the uh, specific port using TCP IP? You need to make the connection. Which means you need to uh, make the another thread or process. Then the, that process or thread will work for that. To create the thread or process, you need the CP at memory resource. Then it's the overflow. So that is one of the very popular attack, DDoS attack. Then how can we the, the decide this is attack, this is not attack? If there's the same request from the same source IP, but it can be the different server and the different so you need to collect all the data. Then it's just a, do, do we need to modify the log data? We just read, right? So we are not going to update or replace such a data. Just read and process. So it's just support read only. No write, no update. You can append the data, but read only. Write once and read many times. So this is the main difference. So, okay, yes, that's it. Also, all of this application, uh, the, this is a file system. Then, there are the more process. So, when you start the head of system, the naming node has the naming node demon. It's a process running on the, this one. Then the each node has the data node, the demon and job tracker, and the task tracker. I will explain the details about it. One, we I'm explaining the map reduce. And the, also data node, job tracker, task tracker, job tracker, task tracker, and so on. They are in charge of later to access the data and process the data. There are different ways to access the, this head of distributed file system. First one is using the shell. Okay. Another approach is uh, using the map videos. So you can use the map videos framework that I'm going to uh, introduce later. And third one is you can use the API program. 
you can directly code using the API, the programming, to access uh, such a data. Anything else? One more thing is, it's coded by Purely Java. So for the communication part, it is based on what? Java virtual machine, Java RMI. It uses uh, such RMI communication for the, to, to share the data. So if you are very familiar with the Java and Java RMI program, it's uh, very easy, okay? And uh, even though you do not know the Java, they provide a framework. It's a kind of the, one of the main the motivation of such a head of system is the, we'd like to take up the housekeeping job <coughs> the, from the, such a distributed file system and also distributed programming. We don't have to worry about the, where the data is located, whether the load balance, just focusing on the algorithm. So that is the main focus, main motivation. Okay, so because of that, even though you do not know the Java, as long as you are able to compile the Java using Java C or the Eclipse, you can do the um, map reduce programming later. But that is based on the Java. Which means when you install the, this one, you should have what? Java virtual machine. So Java 7 or 8. It was a little bit uh, a uh, strict rule to follow specific version in the Hadoop 2 previous version. But version 3, I didn't test it, but I checked the release note. The, they are very flexible to use either Java 7 or Java 8 version. Okay? That is the overall thing for the HDFS. And uh, after short break, so we will start from the 7.40. I will introduce the map videos as well as the, some of the famous uh, headed ecosystem. Okay?